Um, One thing just to point out, it's worth noting, this trainer decided to opt to start Charizard. Oh, wow. Not a very often seen pick, but let's see how it goes. This game you know, takes I think special. if you start Charizard, you're very confident in your Charizard. But Sinji gonna rack on this damage like he usually does. I don't think there's any player in New York that's more confident in their skill with a character than Sinji. I, you would definitely be correct. He's not loud about it, mm -hmm. but this man is like, he's the king of knowing what his character is capable of and right. how he can at least bring that to the fullest for himself. And he was definitely not doing too terrible. I mean, he definitely did get caught in that, that you know, the first 10 second, like, oh my God combo. But I mean, he's kind of finding himself now. I mean, 35%, not terrible. Flare Blitz to get out of there. Was probably trying to go for the ledge, but got stuck at the edge. But Sinji just waiting around with his fruit, like waiting for those combos to come. Gonna get the Nair into the Hydrant. Hydrant's really good against Charizard specifically, just because we've seen the water a couple of times when blocked with the shield. The fact that it's moving up, it's protecting Sinji from any of the aerial assault that Charizard can come down on. Right. And the fact that it's something in the way, Charizard can't just roll up to you and either short up forward air or jab you. Like, he has to respond to it, which gives Sinji plenty of time to get his bonus fruit set up or react to whatever Charizard's doing, because Charizard's not doing anything too quick. Right. Uh, about a minute in here, and, you know, Hugh really kind of found his place. Like I said, it wasn't just kind of get, getting hit by that first combo, but he's also going to get hit by that Hydrant. Yep. Oh, is he, a, is he a Charizard man? Oh, no, he's he's definitely trying Ivysaur here. Maybe Squirtle isn't the play here, but I feel like Squirtle's grab, grab combos are not terrible in this matchup. I also feel the fact that Squirtle can get in incredibly quickly and sort of stick in on characters that box in close range. Very similar to that, I think, like Diddy Kong or Pichu of those like of characters. Right. They can handle um, Pac-Man well, and especially Sinji's style of Pac-Man. Uh-huh. Feels worth moving. For sure. And going to get that up smash on the platform. Like you said, definitely coming into play here. And Hugh only sitting at 60% on Charizard. That's really not too much. Goes for the up smash, gets knocked by Sinji a little bit. Seeing you go for the uh, the up smash out of shield, it's making me think if he knows that he could just fly out of a lot of the shenanigans that Sinji has set. Because, like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> the, ooh, water the water again. The sending him over the, <laughs> over the hydrant a little bit. Wind boxes are wild. I love it. And I feel like Sinji's only gotten better and better at abusing them. He's like, going to get the down throw. Nothing off of it, though. I feel like it's so hard sometimes to follow up on Pac-Man. Yeah, he's not a, really a big target, too. No one really thinks about it, but he really is just a ball with limbs. Again, Dude, just trying to find his shoot. way in, too. Like, he's trying to put out reactions for things that just aren't there. Right. And I feel like that's just the matter of fighting Sinji. Mm -hmm. Like, he's, like, especially when it comes to, like, a lead as substantial as this, Sinji's not going to really press too heavily. Ooh, Sinji going to get hit by the Flare Blitz. Doesn't send him too far, but Sinji perfectly, you know, content. He's just one of those types of players uh, that is perfectly content with just being like, you know what? I'm chilling. Sinji's the kind of man to spend four and a half hours at the DMV and not complain about it later. Oh my God, like he I've did never his time. Four and a half hours at the DMV, I'd hate that. <laughs> but Sinji gonna take that stock. I think this guy might be a, a uh, Charizard main. A really rare breed, but uh, I mean he's he's trying to make it work. Ooh, gonna get carried off. Like, oh my God. We're okay. bringing him back. We're Sin not done yet. Sinji brought him back. He's like, listen, no, I <laughs> wanted the Zard. I don't want your Ivy Sword. I want the Zard. Ooh, okay, I like the weight by Sinji here. Yeah, given the percentages at hand, Sinji can't get anything too nasty with jab locks, so I like the idea of just keep on getting the damage, especially with down air, because it's a really good tech chasing tool. And Hugh just kind of struggling to like get an opportunity in again, like I said. Like, I, I dig the dedication to the character. And I feel like Charizard yeah. has his uses. Bless your soul, all of you, all of you solo Pokemon mains, all of you low tier hero mains. Bless it's, your souls. It's just not the move. At least not in this matchup. No, I mean, yeah, definitely not in this matchup. I think um, Q kind of has to play a little bit more aggressively. Uh, we know that Sinji's not. Sinji's just gonna charge up his fruit and just be completely content with getting those nares and just kicking him away, dropping the hydrant, kicking the hydrant, and then charging his fruit like. He's just going to wait. He's going to wait it out. And Charizard doesn't have that great of grounded reversal options. Right. So, like, you know he's going to have to go for fly. Right. And that in itself is a fairly punishable action, especially if Sinji opts to not really commit too hard to something. So I feel like if Q starts to adapt Sinji's play style into his own, right. starts to wait there, 
start going from retreating fairs, almost treat it like a discount wolf as far as the tools that Charizard has. I feel like things can turn more to his favor, but the switch to Yoshi's story, I think, is a step in the right direction. Right, definitely the three-platform format. Hey, man, what do you think about this stage? You know, a lot of the times uh, when we see, you know, we talk about Ultimate, we talk about Stageless, you think of the usual five starters, uh, Battlefield, FD, one of the Pokemon stadiums, because it's not the same in every region, uh, Town and City, Smashville, and then a couple counterpicks, but we rarely see Yoshi's story at a, I believe this is a PGR B tier. Yeah, so I personally like this stage. I treat it in the same way as Smashville, where it's a very condensed stage. Right. It's forcing you to fight, and even though it has the triplats that allow for a very small degree of circle camping mm -hmm. or aerial control, that characters like Charizard can take good advantage of. I feel like a lot of the benefit of the stage is the fact that its blast zones are very tight into the stage. Right. By that I mean once you're off screen, you're essentially against the blast zone. You don't have a lot of wiggle room, as opposed to stages like, say for instance, Kalos or Battlefield, where you're chilling if you have a lot of airspace, and if you play a character with good recovery, you're always coming back. Right. Here, this is a great stage to explode on your opponent. And I think all of the Pokemon can actually benefit from story really well. I feel like it's a, a more exasperated version of Battlefield as far as how their tools can control and how well they can limit whoever they're fighting. I think a lot of the problems that people have with this stage is not only the triplats, but the slants at the end. Uh, slants are generally not liked by the community. You know, a lot of, you know, some people may say Lilac Cruise is uh, beautiful and perfect, but it does have those slants. Uh, Yoshi's Island Brawl, like those types of things, but you know, Sinji here just kind of having his heyday. As far as, this, I actually, so like, while I do think the stage itself is a good choice, I feel like it's Sinji who's taking more advantage of it. And that's in just bringing it towards center stage, which I think is a great counter offensive to anyone who's trying to bring you to a more unorthodox stage such as this. Because if you notice, Sinji's really not trying to play too heavily to the slants or to the ledge. He's really trying to keep things close in. And now we're seeing a bit more focus to the bonus fruit as opposed to earlier where there's more of the hydrant that was taking advantage. And you can't really break zone here. Even though he's got the platforms to take his time with coming in, it's still just giving Sinji time to set up shop, and there comes the Rocket Bell. I love oh it every God, time. Oh that's so cool. <laughs> that was gross. If you pay attention to when those water spouts come from the fire hydrant, and you see Sinji all of a sudden wait for some reason, you know he's playing it something filthy. Oh, I, did you see almost that ledge guard, or that uh, ledge hog? That was, that was about to be crazy. This but whole chain was, was nasty. What are you talking about? That all was right. Crazy. <laughs> Since you had to remind people that you could still get hype for him. With a clean tool like that, always got to love seeing this man every time he's on right. stage. And you would think that, it, you know, that 2 would be like kind of quick, but it was actually kind of like a spaced out match. Like, Sinji really just took his time. He was really comfortable. You know, he was just it like, was you know what, Charizard. Charizard hits kind of hard. Let me just chill back, charge my fruit, get my setups. And I mean, he definitely got his setups. They were definitely like, yeah. super fun to watch.